down in uh, Portsmouth. You remember Al Oliver? Oh, I've met him too, yeah. Oh, you mm -hmm. have? Yeah, I've oh, got his autograph somewhere. Yeah, what a great guy. I'm going to push him for the Hall of Fame. Well, he's, he's batted over 300, and he's, he's like the senior thing up for the Hall of Fame now, so that's really good. Okay, uh, listen, I, I, I want to just, two really important things. First of all, this is a really big deal to be able to get the emergency rooms to agree that uh, they're going to enter a pro protocol so that we're not going to allow people to go in there and get these prescriptions and uh, and to be able to sell them. I mean, this is a huge step, and I'm, I can't tell you how happy I am that the urgent care people raised their hand and said, we want to be a part of it. But the next step is going to be even bigger, which is to work with all the medical community, the deans of the medical schools, and everybody involved in education so that we can really get a handle on the total number of these opiates that are being prescribed uh, statewide. And I think if we can lead on this, and I think we've been leading on the other areas, I think it'll, be, it'll serve as a further impetus for uh, other states to get into the act. And as I was with the governor of Kentucky, uh, we, we talked about what we did with emergency rooms. He also, he said to me, he said, we looked at a lot of what you did in House Bill 93 and we took some of it. And I said, in the wider effort now to try to get a handle on this statewide with all the parties is something you ought to look at as well. So uh, I think there's been some great work done here, but you know, I was, uh, when I was in, uh, I was in Portsmouth, they were asking me, do you, do you think you've made great progress? I said, well, you know, I think it's, uh, it's, okay, it's okay, and they said, this was the newspaper, they said, we think you've made great progress here, which is really great to hear, but we, we certainly have a long way to go because this problem is just so difficult. But look, we're, we're not looking the other way, we're engaging in it, and uh, we feel good about it. Governor, Governor, you're pretty good at plain English. What does protocol mean in plain English? Well, it means you just, there are rules under which guidelines, under which you can give these, these drugs and the write prescriptions for these drugs. It's just going to be better rules and, um, and also telling people when they come in the door, don't be expecting to get uh, massive doses of, of these drugs. Ted, you want to say, doctor, you want to say anything about this? Yeah, the important thing is all the major agencies that are involved were all at the table. They uh, contributed to the ultimate development of guidelines that we have, and they've all agreed to follow them. So you'll see their endorsements on the bottom of these guidelines, and they very clearly spell out for the prescribers what the expectation is across the state. So we'll finally reach consistency in the way that we're prescribing anywhere you go in Ohio. Is there anything requiring the emergency room doctors, though, to follow these rules? And if there's not, what could happen to them if they, if they don't follow the protocol? Yeah, these are guidelines, so they're not rules or law in the way you think of statute, but what they are is an agreement amongst all of our agencies. And we also brought the emergency room nurses to the table and the urgent care physicians to the table, and they've all put uh, together a set that they say they will work by, live by, and adhere to at this time. So we have an agreement with them to operate this way. Now, and, and let me, let me an an answer that directly too. Nobody's going to want to be out of the circle on this. I mean, there is a way for us through the Department of Health and all the uh, and House Bill 93 to determine who's doing what, and uh, I don't think we're going to have a problem with uh, with operating or, or emergency rooms saying we, we we just don't want to follow these guidelines. If we were to see some outliers, we deal with it, and there are more than one way to deal with it, including standing out right out front of the hospital to talk to people about it. But the one thing I think we can achieve here is we don't want to be at war with people who are trying to practice medicine. Uh, so, you know, you start sticking things in the statute and it becomes, you know, sometimes not exact. But we know where we want to get to. And we're confident that both through these guidelines and the guidelines that will come, if we can work this out on the larger universe of, of, pres of prescribers, we think we can get there. I mean, do, I'm optimistic about it. Where do we stand right now in terms of where we are? I mean, is, do they actually have a protocol in hand? Or is it ready to be implemented? Yes, we've got it here today. We're ready this to emergency this, rooms now. Okay. This is emergency departments and uh, urgent care centers. But we have a protocol in place. You'll get a copy of it here today. And it's ready to start today. We're distributing it through all the state associations. We're also getting out uh, news uh, articles. We're doing other releases releases through the agency newsletters to make sure they all know about it. But the thing the governor was saying that I want to reinforce is that everyone wants to be at the table on this because you don't want to be the ED or urgent care in your community that does not follow this because you will get everyone who wants to divert 
drugs or misuse drugs coming to your center, and that's largely not what any of these centers want to be about. Well, and, and let me tell you, this is a case where the vigilance of the press is important. You know, this is a place where you can dig down and find out how it's going. Jim, yeah, I imagine there'll be some fits and starts in the beginning, but over time we'll be able to measure it, and I think it'll work. This one was, um, for, I mean, you know, these are three really pretty remarkable people. The next step is going to be be tougher. I mean, they had a lot of problems out in the state of Washington on this because there's a reluctance to let legislators or bureaucrats, uh, cabinet officials or not, get in the business of telling a doctor about how to how to practice uh, how to practice medicine, but I think we will have reasonable guidelines on this as well, and and I'm very optimistic that we will Ohio will be a, a model and a leader again. Some of the service providers out there are welcoming this. They're also expressing concern about possible budget cuts to ODATIS in the mid-biennium review. Uh, what kind of effects could those cuts have on what you're trying to accomplish? Here? Well, look, I mean, we are going to uh, over time. First of all. We've done more than anybody has on the issue of even recognizing and fighting this problem. Secondly, what we're doing is the state is going to assume all funding for the Medicaid match, which is really important, leaving local governments in a position to keep their levy dollars. We also think there needs to be more cooperation. Uh, there needs to be more shared services among all those operations. Plus, uh, we're meeting some of what we think are the critical needs there. So I'm, I'm comfortable uh, with where we are, and I think we're going to be able to satisfy a lot of these, these local communities. And, um, but again, we're going to have more resources dedicated to fighting uh, or to being in the business of, uh, of treating drugs than any administration in the history of Ohio. Governor, with, the, with your regional approach, uh, with the uh, you know, pill mills moving out of Scioto County, are you seeing signs that they're simply setting up a camp in Kentucky? I haven't heard Indiana? not. Uh, well, what, what, what Colonel Bourne, who I think is here, and, and Tom Charles have told me is when you take a look at where, they're get, where they believe these, these things are moving, they believe that some of the arteries are beginning to shift to the west, is what they have told me. Um, but, you know, I know Mitch Daniels pretty well, and they know the patrol over there, so we can just drive them out of the Midwest and keep driving, and maybe we can drive them in the Pacific Ocean. I mean, but, you know, you, you have to take care of things at home, and that doesn't mean that we've got this all fixed. We don't have this fixed by a long shot, but it's starting to take a toll. When people are getting busted left and right out there on the highways, uh, it costs a lot of money to these, uh, to these drug dealers. And so, uh, and I have to also tell you that as they're doing the drug deal uh, bus, they're also starting to, to have an impact on human trafficking because they're finding that the twin evils of drug trafficking and human trafficking sometimes occur at the same time. So, patrol's doing a great job. They're doing a great job, but got to get the sheriffs more involved, local governments, everybody. I think, you know, I'm, I feel good about where we are. We have a long way to go. Last question, guys. So, the, just in plain English, this, you said that the, the hospitals, the emergency rooms, can't be prescribing large numbers of these and that people should know up front that they're not going to get a lot of opiates. Yeah, they're is not there, going to. Is there a number? Is there, how do you quantify that? Yes, we have a patient information uh, piece that goes along with our prescribing guidelines. You'll see it on the back of our form, and that tells the patient very clearly what to expect when you come to this facility. By and large, the emergency department physicians won't be prescribing more than a three-day supply of opioids or other controlled substances because they want to reconnect patients in pain with their own personal physicians or subspecialists if they've had things like fractures or other things. So they're buying them the time to get to the ultimate care that they're seeking. So they're reinforcing the fact that they are an interim step for a patient's chronic pain management and not a place to come yeah, the, the, if you want pain control. The other thing we're doing here is we're trying to drive more patients to church primary care. That's the point of uh, of Dr. Wimslow's medical home and Greg Moody's great work at, in, uh, in health transformation to coordinate patients. Let me say another thing to you. Uh, this is a big deal that we are working to combine both mental health and, uh, and the drug treatment programs. When Orman Hall came in for his interview and he reminds me of it, I said, Orman, are you ready to work yourself out of a job? Now, he's not going to be out of a job because he's a central and critical f figure in this, uh, in this fight. But there is a link between the treatment of mental illness and the treatment of drug abuse. And they've been separated for too long. It's almost like the difference between physical health and mental health, which is what we also 
uh, integrate. It's something that, uh, Alan, you should pay attention to because the integration of, of mental and physical health really allows us not only to save money, but also gets in a, us in a position to deliver better care. And this is something that was in our original budget. This idea of combining uh, mental health and, uh, and the treatment of, of drug abuse, these are often uh, twins. Uh, and so the ability to take a, a combined approach makes a lot of sense. We'll save some money in the process, but that wasn't the key of it. And we're not looking to lay people off or fire people when we do this. We just want to get people in the right in the right uh, positions here. And uh, unlike what they did at Jobs and Family Services, where they kind of smash things together just to do it, this is one that actually has a really strong rationale in terms of how we think we can better help people who have these these issues of mental illness and drug abuse as well. So, you know. It's a really unusual thing, I guess, for administration to spend this much time on these issues. But these are the real human issues that are plaguing the state. And uh, I'm just thrilled that we're taking these steps forward. And, and I know that other governors are, uh, are taking a look at it. And, cripe, it's, it's good for, for all of us. So thank you all Thanks, very guys. much. Thank you, Governor.